a very warm welcome again. We have finished with HCF and LCM yesterday. Now, as I told you yesterday, today we are going to start with trigonometry, which is also one of the very important part of class 10 syllabus, of course. And this is also a part in your PET exam, PAT, that is Polytechnic Admission Test for a sum. So I'd like to start with trigonometry because most of the time it has been observed that students find uh, trigonometry a little bit difficult. But whereas it is not as difficult as it is thought to be, right? So once you will complete the uh, process mm, or complete the chapters, I hope you won't find any more problems with this particular chapter. Still, again, repeatedly, I'm telling you, if you find any problem, please do talk to me or send me your questions or doubts on my WhatsApp number. Okay, let's start with today's very important and uh, very powerful chapter, trigonometry. Okay, so it has two parts. One is the basic and another is its application. So both I'll discuss, but day by day. And I might take three, four periods for this. So we'll start with the word trigonometry. First, you try to know the meaning of this trigonometry, right? So if you have this word, this word is very important. This is going to give you actually a combination of three different words, Greek words. I have divided the whole trigonometry into three parts. The first time we talk about three, gone means sides. Metri is coming from metria, that is miser. So three sides miser. So what does this imply? Three sides misers. It means you have to do something with a polygon with three sides. Meaning, you have to do something with right triangle. A triangle in general, but to start with, we have to use a right triangle. And we'll be getting the definitions of six ratios from this right triangle only. I'll review quickly the definitions because that are more important. So now to start with, I have to consider one right angle triangle. So let us start with a right triangle. See, uh, please put little more attention out of these theorems and the definitions because once the definition will be clear, you will definitely be able to cope up with the whole syllabus very comfortably. I have considered a right triangle. This is the 90 degree angle and all you know that this is the symbol box angle bracket which will be used for indicating a right angle, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> right angle in the triangle. The box angle represents the right angle, that is a 90 degree angle in the triangle. So this is a symbolization you have to know very clearly. And if this is 90 degree, angle some property of triangle says that these two should be having a sum 90 degree. Right? It means both of them are less than 90 degree. It means they are both acute. Acute means any angle whose measurement is between 0 to 90 degree. 0 is not an acute angle, please make sure. And 90 degree is right angle triangle. So less than that, even 1 degree or 0.5 degree, that is considered as acute angle. So here in this particular triangle, these two are the acute angle. Now to start with trigonometry, we have to make a choice of either of these two acute angle. I can go for any of the choice, but for your convenience, and the usual approach, I want to consider this angle. Right? 
it angle B I would like to take now see uh, choosing angle B or angle A has a very important uh, implications why let me try to explain all of you know already that if a rectangle is there whatever is the side opposite to the whatever is the side opposite to the right angle is always known as we call it hypotenuse right yeah you all might be knowing it hypotenuse which in short will denote it by small h for our convenience then we are left with two sides now to name those two sides this angle is important right choice of this angle will tell you the left out side should be named by what now just please be very attentive i'm talking about the very basic this is to be only a very very clear to you whatever angle you have chosen this is the angle you have chosen simply opposite to this whatever side you get what i'm saying opposite side of the angle you have chosen is known as perpendicular right and we denote it by e small p and then the last whatever is left out we name it as base that is p okay so take a pause of the video and just try to identify how to know which is perpendicular which is base and which one is a hypotenuse now there is one thing very sure whatever may be the angle you choose whether b or a hypotenuse will never be changed hypotenuse will never be changed it is opposite to the fixed right angle of the right angle now supposing that instead of choosing b you choose a what would happen opposite of a will be this side and as per our idea we will name b as perpendicular right so be very very alert i am again writing it i am re emphasizing opposite side right opposite side of the chosen angle is perpendicular and adjacent side adjacent side is base adjacent means neighboring side so whatever angle you have chosen you have two adjacent side one is the hypotenuse so what is the other one is the base so this is what the very fundamental and starting point of trigonometry and if any person is very very clear about this they won't make any difference or any mistakes in the subsequent lessons or subsequent problems so please keep a pause halt for some time identify just by drawing many triangles as soon as possible by making a change in the name that will be a trick so as to get the basics or the definitions clear okay so now why we need these measurements question is that actually we are going to deal with this measurements right we have how many measurements we have now three measurements one is p another is uh, b and then is h we have three measurements perpendicular base and hypotenuse for a moment we will talk like this only these are numbers right if you have a triangle you can get the measurements and they will always come in numbers in practical perspective we need not bother about the decimal part till two three decimal places if we get a approximated well then also it will do so now if we find ratios of those numbers then we are going to relate those ratios to trigonometric ratios right for example 
if I find the ratio of perpendicular to hypotenuse, whatever it is, forget about, right? Then this will name as sine. But this sine doesn't mean anything. It will be meaningful only if you tell what angle you have chosen in order to identify P and H. So in this particular figure, I use angle B for identifying this as P, this is H, right? So I should write the angle here. So please be very sure that sine without this angle is useless totally. Not only sine, other ratios as well. But now I am going to take some convention. Instead of writing sine angle B, you can write roughly sine B also. That would also be good for writing. And we will understand that we are talking about angle B only. Secondly, we will uh, make a habit of writing P by H. But when you write in practice a bigger problems, we should write sine B equals not P. You have to think mentally perpendicular but which will be the original site that you should write. I hope you are clear so far. You are clear so far. I am taking a little more time to explain this because these are going to be the basics of the whole trigonometry. Sine B, I am talking about this angle, is the ratio of the perpendicular to the Sorry, uh, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not the BC. It's the hypotenuse AB. Right? So it is sine B equal to AC by AB. Now I have just found the ratio P and H. P by H. I have three numbers. So I will be getting six possible ratios. And each of the ratios will be generating you trigonometric ratios and these are the six basic ratios right now i'm going to remove this figure i'm going to rewrite the complete set of six ratios that's what you have to remember you have to understand that, right i'll not now take the reference of the figure right i'll not take the reference of the figure i'll simply write the ratios okay Sine angle B is P by H. I will not write the side. Then if I try to take the reverse, the reciprocal, ulta, upside down, then it is cos and P. They are ulta pulta which are ulta pulta, reciprocal. Cos B, it is B by H base by hypotenuse then you take the reverse that is h by b it is sec ok then we are left with tan b it is p by b and then reverse of uh, ulta of tan is cot b that is B by B. So in a nutshell, I must say that these are the six foundation stone you have to start a trigonometry. If you are clear about these six ratios, then you will face very less problems in future to tackle trigonometry because most of the time students are having problem with these ratios definition only. Anyway, I'll supply you a proof, uh, sorry, supply you a memory aid in order to remember this, right? But before that, you try to remember it without any memory aid, if it is possible. Now, very important point, we are going to generalize. As you already know, in algebra, unknown quantities we consider by writing x. In the triangle, we have considered angle B. What is the guarantee that always you will get angle B? Right? No. It may be P, it may be Q, it may be X, it may be Y, anything it could be, right? 
So we will be using a variable for denoting the angle. That measurements. Like just I am drawing this part. It was the angle B. Instead of writing angle B, I will assign a measurement theta. So in the definition, instead of writing B, I call it sin theta. I call it cosec theta. I call it cos theta. I call it sec theta. I call it tan theta. I call it cot theta. I hope till here there is no doubt so far. Take a pause for a moment. Again, see, correlate this everything with the figure. Try to relate this with the original sides A, B, A, C, or whatever it is. And then you will try to come back to the video, right? Now I'll proceed further. I'll proceed further with their characteristics, with some notes. But before I proceed again, I would like to remind you one thing very important observation you make. Sin theta is P by H reciprocal upside down. Okay, upside down. In a light note, I say Sirsasan, Mundi Nicha Tangri Upar. In a light note, Agar ye Mundi hai, ye Tangri hai, Tangri mein love sorry for using slangs, but remember ke nigel ye baut badiya hai. This is the head, this is the tail, or you say leg, make it upside. Right? Then you get cos theta. Reciprocal. Similarly, cos theta and sec theta, they are ultra put of each other, reciprocal of each other. Tin and quad, reciprocal of each other. Why I am saying this? Just keep in mind, I am going to deduce a very important result out of this. And you will find that it gives no effort to remember many formula at a time. Right? Probably I will be the first person to tell you that you need not remember after this anything. You remember only these things and simple trick. Then your trigonometry will be always easy for you. Right? Many people might say, why itna formula hai? You remember all these 30, 40, 45 formula. Never learn this. Do remember all this. Okay? So now let's proceed. For a very important note, because there are some conditions where we commit mistakes, right? It is either a teacher fails to explain because of many reasons, maybe he forgets. I don't want to say that the teacher doesn't know, but may forget. Maybe I will also forget something. But for a moment, I am not forgetting this important point. So I'm making a note of this. Note, see, once we write sin theta, please make sure I'm doing it only for one ratio. This is very equally for all the ratios. But I'll give the example only for sin. Many people might think that sin theta means sin into theta. Into means I'm talking about multiplication. Meaning sin and theta are multiplied in order to get sin theta. It's very wrong. This is a very wrong concept, which you need to be very clear. Sin theta itself is a quantity. Together it makes a quantity. They are not multiplied at all. Without this theta, this sign will have no meaning with reference to that particular time. So be very sure they are not multiplication equally applicable to all the remaining ratios this is note number one right it is not multiplication i'll not write statement my explanation would definitely explain you number two if somebody says that i have to find the sine theta whole cube right sine theta whole cube means sine ka kuch value hai usko cube karna hai then this can be written as sine cube theta but not but not make sure this is not equal to sine theta cube 
साइन थीटा क्यूब नहीं है दिस इज अ डेफिनेशन वन मोर थिंग आई अपोलोजाइज वी डू नॉट राइट इक्वेशंस और इन इक्वेशंस लाइक दिस इट्स एन एक्सप्लेनेशन सो आई एम राइटिंग इट लाइक दिस सो डू नॉट यूज दिस काइंड ऑफ नोटेशन सिंपल सिंपल एक्सप्रेशन इन एग्जाम इफ इट इज डेस्क्रिप्टिव इट विल बी कंसिडर्ड इज अ रॉन्ग वे बट फॉर यू आई एम डूइंग इट दिस इज नॉट इक्वल टू दिस दिस इज इक्वल टू दिस राइट सो बी वेरी वेरी अलर्ट क्यूब इट इज रिटर्न मीन्स थीटा इज हैविंग द पॉवर क्यूब एंड इन दिस केस साइन थीटा एज ए होल इज हैविंग द क्यूब राइट आई हैव गिवन एग्जाम्पल फॉर क्यूब दिस इज इन जेनरल रिटर्न एज दिस साइन थीटा टू दी पॉवर एन इज इक्वल टू साइन एन थीटा बट दिस इज नॉट इक्वल टू साइन थीटा टू दी पॉवर Okay, this two are equally applicable for the remaining six ratios, five ratios. So take your time, write these things for the remaining five ratios for your practice, right? If you understand, you are convinced that you can do it. No need, right? Okay. So now I'll come to the note number three, which will tell you the complete name of the ratios. Note number three. Sine is the abbreviation of the complete name sine S I N E. We'll be needing it because of the time telling you. Cos is the short abbreviation of the complete name cosine. Tan is the complete. Uh, tan has the complete name tangent. Now we'll be talking about the reciprocals. Sine, ulta was cosec. Depth full form is cosecant. Cos reciprocal is sec. Depth full form is secant. Tan, ulta is cot. The full form is cotangent. Cotangent. So I would definitely emphasize you to remember this, please. Right? We all remember all these sorts, but we need time to remember all these bigger ones. We forget. So it's not difficult to remember. What you remember, do remember it, and then it will help you in remembering some other difficult formula. Right? So these are the things which you need to be very very particular about. Right? so here also at this point of time i would again tell you pause the video for some time pause it go through this then only you proceed further even if i am explaining a little more today in this particular video okay thank you now another important thing i'd like to tell you today before i proceed for the formula see i'll go back to the triangle because these are very basic things which a student might forget sometimes right keeping this as the angle i name it as b this is p suppose this is a theta okay what how do you rent this as you name it as p by h this is the hypotenuse now just you tell me have you ever got that in a right triangle hypotenuse is the longest side yes you got it so whenever you find sine you will find always hypotenuse is below denominator and this is always up and this is always bigger than this this is always bigger than this so what happens to a fraction if denominator is bigger numerator is smaller value is always less than One, okay. Value is less than one. But there is a question. Ah, uh, there is a point where we will get sine ninety degree also in standard equal angle. So there sine ninety will give you a value one, which will not be reflected from this triangle. So normally, except ninety degree, for other angles it will be less than one. But for ninety degree it will be one. 
Yeah, if I get time, I'll show you also why this one. So sine theta value will be less than or equal to one. Okay. And as I'm discussing up to class 10, up to class 10, these measurements will be positive. So this ratio will be always greater than or equal to zero. Please make sure I'm repeating again. I'm doing the explanation up to class 10. It is the discussion on the first quadrant. So sine value will be only the positive values will be taken. So zero to one. So if somebody asks you what is the maximum value of sine theta for any angle is one. Okay. In the similar note, think about cos, it will also give you the same idea. Because for cos also, the value lies, the value lies in such a way that denominator is h and the numerator is a quantity less than that. What about their reciprocals? If somebody asks you about cosec, yeah, cosec theta is just the reverse. Meaning is that it will be always greater than 1. Rather, for 90 degree we will be getting 1. So it is greater than or equal to 1. If you consider the number line, then it will be easy for you. If it is 1, if it is 0, here it is the place for sine theta, it is the place for cos theta, this onwards it is cosec theta and sec theta cosec theta and sec theta cosec theta and sec theta okay and for tan and cot you have values ranging from 0 to infinity 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 is not a number it's a concept forget about that for the time being Infinity मतलब बहुत बड़ा quantity ऐसे समझ के काम कर लो undefined ठीक है we have a good definition of infinity we need not discuss it now so these are the things which you need to remember because this can give you, can be giving you uh, multiple choice questions the maximum value of sine theta is one two three four options are given one right the maximum value of 10 theta is does not exist because it goes up to infinity. Minimum value of 10 theta is 0. I again would like to tell you we are discussing everything in the context of plus 10. Otherwise in practice these are not the smallest values. They have negative values as well. You need not bother about that. Okay, now before I proceed, let me announce that I am going to just take up the first nine easy formula which you need not learn in fact, you have to remember now that hence I have left it, ulta ulta, right? Just a question to you, if somebody tells you, you multiply a number which is reciprocal, ek number ko iske ulte se multiply karlo. Let me try to tell you, ulta is not the correct term to make a memory aid, I am telling you. For example, 2 by 3 ko 3 by 2 se multiply karo. What you will get? 1, exactly. So, we have already got that sine theta and each ulta is cosec theta. So, what if I multiply this sine and cos, cosec? We will be always getting one so you need to remember this remember only that they are ulta ulta with other and if you find like this then your common sense says because class 10 aate aate itna to sikh hi gaye ho that if i tell you what is sign you will write this as 1 by cosec do the same thing for cosec cosec theta will be equal to 1 by sin theta. Now just you see how many formula you did. Three formula without learning. Note it. Do the same application for the other pair. Cos. What is the ulta of cos? Sec. Sec theta. 
uh, from here what will you get cos theta is equal to 1 by sec theta and then sec theta will be equal to 1 by cos theta another set of three formula you have three formula done here this is another three now for ten and for three more you will get and you will find that there is no effort in remembering this formula so that's what i wanted to tell you in the third pair i am not writing this is for you you will practice by the time we will come next very probably we will be doing or we will be meeting it with tomorrow only so till tomorrow i request you all to go through it once okay thank you so much